Welcome back, everybody, to another deep dive. Oh. You know, we always like to pick some really interesting yeah. source material for these deep dives, and uh, and I think we got a really good one this time. I think so, too. So we're going to be looking at the life of a woman named Alvina Houghton, and uh, our main source of information is a little um, bit different this time. It's not like a straight biography or a history book or anything. Right. It's uh, it's actually excerpts from a fictional story. Oh, interesting. But uh, yeah. I, I think what's really cool about it is that even though it is fictional, mm -hmm. I think it still gives us a really fascinating oh, yeah. glimpse into yeah. the lives of women yeah. and just kind of societal norms and, and individual experiences yeah. in a very specific time and place. Well, you know, it's funny because sometimes you can learn more about human nature and about a historical period from fiction right? than from just straight facts. Absolutely. Because you get that sort of emotional yeah. truth. Yeah, and, and that's... And it resonates. I, I think what we're going to find here as yeah. we go through this... Yeah. So we're going to be looking at Alvina's journey, obviously. Uh-huh. But I... I think as we do that, we're also going to be kind of piecing together like yeah. what this tells us about the world around her. Absolutely. So yeah. with that in mind, why don't we jump in? Yeah, let's do it. And start with uh, Alvina's childhood. Okay. So she grows up in this place called Manchester House. Manchester House. In a town named Woodhouse. Okay. And right away you get this sense of... I don't know. I don't want to say dysfunction necessarily, mm. but definitely mm. unique family dynamics. Yeah. Um, a little bit offbeat, maybe. Yeah, a little bit offbeat. Yeah. Um, and and her father, James Hewton, is this. Okay. He's described as this kind of eccentric fabric merchant with this like real taste for luxury. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So like really beautiful materials and. Yes, beautiful silks, imported materials. Fancy stuff. Yeah, fancy stuff. Not necessarily what the local. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like yeah. it doesn't seem to really fit. With well, the more practical needs of, of needs of the town, yeah, the yeah. town of the people of Woodhouse, right. And he also just seems so detached. Uh -huh. After Alvina's born, he kind of isolates himself. Oh wow! Leaving her mother to not only deal with, uh, you know, yeah, all of the everyday tasks of running this household, yeah, but also her own, you know, grief and her health is declining. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine like trying to raise a child under no. those circumstances? No, it paints a pretty stark picture of, you know, what happens when a family unit kind of breaks down. Right. Yeah. How those cracks can impact yeah. everyone involved. Yeah. Especially a child. Especially a child. Yeah. And then on top of that, you have yeah. these two other women who have this oh. huge influence on Alvina's life, Miss Frost and Miss Pinnaker. Okay, got it. And it's almost like they run Manchester House, but they do it in such different ways. Interesting. It's almost like you see two contrasting yeah. approaches to leadership playing out. In real time. Yeah. Yeah. So Miss Frost is portrayed as this very strong and generous woman. Okay. You know, the kind of person who just radiates stability. Mm -hmm. But Miss Pinnegar is much more reserved. Okay. But there's also this, like, quiet power to her interesting and especially her influence over james oh wow it makes you wonder what alvina absorbed from each of these women right how could you not right like growing up growing up in this household yeah in that environment yeah i mean it's like a lesson in how influence can be so different right you know like mm -hmm. you can have that overt strength and that generosity yeah but you can also have quiet power yeah, exactly. And and how she starts to navigate those dynamics as she gets older, I think, is something we'll, yeah. we'll probably see. Absolutely. And then there's another layer to all of this, which is this financial strain. Oh, okay. James, with his expensive tastes yeah. and his kind of inability to cater to the local market, right. he keeps having these clearance sales. Oh, geez. Almost desperately trying to stay afloat. Wow. Yeah. Keeping up with the Joneses, so to speak, but... Not really working out. Not really working out. Yeah. And it makes you think, like, have you ever felt that pressure, you know, oh, absolutely. trying to balance your dreams with the practicalities of life? I think everybody has at some point. Right. You know, that, that trying to make ends meet yes. and also do what you love. Yeah. It's a tough... Tough balance. Yeah. And for Alvina, it seems like this financial instability really fields into her desire to escape mm -hmm. the confines of Woodhouse. Yeah, she wants out. Yeah. yeah. And we learned that she just, she feels trapped. Okay. She's longing for something more 
mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. what society is saying she should, you know, for a woman in her position. Yeah, in her situation. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And this restlessness leads her to make some pretty bold choices. Oh, okay. Like she tries her hand at being a maternity nurse okay. in this really bleak oh, wow. urban environment. So different from Woodhouse. Yeah, totally different. Okay. But it clearly doesn't fulfill her. Doesn't cut it. No. Yeah. And it makes you realize how important it is right. to find work that aligns with- Yeah, with your value. Value. And aspirations. Yeah. Totally. And I think that's one of the things that's so fascinating about yeah. Alvina's story is that she's constantly seeking- uh-huh. She's pushing the boundaries of what's expected of her. She's not going to be put in a box. No. Yeah. And that search leads her to this really transformative experience, which is this this group yeah. called the Nachikitawara Troupe. Nachikawara. It's a group of traveling performers. Wow. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine the thrill of encountering this group of people, especially uh-huh. after... After coming from where she came from. Yeah. It's yeah. like, this must have been amazing, a yeah. breath of fresh air. Totally. Well. And they're led by this woman, yeah. Madame, who's just this Madame. incredibly shrewd and commanding figure. Okay, so she's in charge. She's in charge, yeah. Got it. And it's this whole mix of personalities and talents uh-huh. that really add to the group's dynamic. Okay, cool. And this is where Alvina takes another leap. Okay. She joins them as their pianist. Wow. So she's finally escaping the constraints of her family. Mm-hmm. She's embracing this nomadic lifestyle. Right. It's almost like she trades one kind of confinement for another. Yeah, but this time it's by choice. But it's by choice, exactly. Interesting. She's actively seeking something different. She's looking for something. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a huge step towards self-discovery. It is. You know, she goes from being this like restless daughter right. in this failing business uh-huh. to being this contributing member of this right. community. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it is a community that society might- A little unconventional. Unconventional, exactly. Yeah. And she's surrounded by all these like fascinating, larger than life personalities. Oh, I like it. Yeah, so I'm like wondering. Chicho, he's described as this incredibly charismatic, Right. But volatile character. Ooh, volatile. Yeah, he's got the simmering anger. A little scary. Yeah. That could erupt at any moment. Oh. Um, and then there's Jeffrey, who seems to be kind of like oh. the voice of reason, like oh. the steady presence in the midst of the calm amidst the storm. The storm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. And then there's Max, <laughs> who's described as being a little more controlling, oh. and he often clashes with Chicho's fiery nature. Oh, so there could be some conflict here. Yeah, and there is, I mean, remember that incident where Chicho almost... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Attacks Max. Yikes. Yeah. Talk about underlying tension. Yeah, like a powder keg. It's a reminder that even within a chosen family, there are going to be conflicts and power struggles. Absolutely. And Elvina, having witnessed this in her own family, now she's right in the thick of it again. She can't get away from it. It's like she's come full circle. Yeah. But this time, she's not just observing. Right. She's actively navigating. So it's how to deal with it. Yeah. Really? These really complex relationships. Right. Head on. Yeah. Yeah. And she's not the naive young woman who left Woodhouse anymore. Right. Life on the road has taught her uh-huh. resilience. It's taught her adaptability. Mm-hmm. Maybe even a touch of cynicism. Yeah. And just as she's finding her place uh-huh. within this troop, another blow hits. Oh, no. What now? Her father is financially ruined. Oh, jeez. Like, completely. Wow. It's this stark reminder that even as she's gaining independence... Right. Her past and her family's struggles uh-huh. are never far behind. You can't outrun your past. You can't outrun your past. Yeah. It's a sobering thought. It is. And for Alvina, this news comes at a really crucial moment. Oh, how so? She's We're... gone from feeling trapped in her father's house... Right to potentially being bound to the fate of this troop. Oh, wow. It's a real turning point in her story. Okay. And it's against this backdrop of uncertainty Mm. that her relationship with Chicho takes center stage. Oh, boy. This is about to get good. You know, it's interesting how she's drawn to his intensity, you know? Right. He's so different from the men that she's known before. Right. Like, there's this darkness to him, this brooding quality Mm. that probably felt both alluring and dangerous. Yeah, and I think she's also craving that passion. Oh, absolutely. You know, that spark of the unpredictable yeah. after years of just feeling so stifled. 
Right, exactly. And and it's that yeah. that yearning that leads to, you know. Their relationship really intensifies quickly. Mm-hmm. And they have this one encounter that is yeah. very passionate. Yeah. And it really reveals a lot about, I think, the power dynamics at play. Yeah. Not just between them as individuals, but right. within the larger context yeah. of their society. Their society, yeah. Makes you think about how societal norms can influence right. even our most intimate relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. And, hey. and for Alvina, I think there's this element of rebellion too. Oh, totally. She's pushing against those boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Of what's considered acceptable right. for a woman of her time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, that defiance. Right. That willingness to kind of break free from convention. Yeah. Leads them to marriage. Okay. And a journey to Chicho's family home in the Italian countryside. Wow. I mean, talk about a leap of faith. It is a huge leap of faith. Yeah. I mean, she is constantly seeking these new horizons, cool. these new experiences, even if it means embracing the unknown. Yeah, she's not afraid of it. No. But and I can man. only imagine how daunting that must have been. Right. To just leave everything behind. To uproot your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. For this completely new culture, a whole new way of life. I mean, I think we've all had those moments, though. Oh, yeah. Where, where you just think, like, wouldn't it be great to just pack yeah. it all up? And And go somewhere else. Yeah, start over somewhere completely different. But for her, this isn't a fantasy. Right. This is her reality. This is her reality. Yeah, and now she's not just a performer. Mm -hmm. She's a wife trying to adapt to this new family. Yeah, a traditional Italian family. Yeah. Oh, wow. And facing the realities of rural life. (laughs) Right. What does that even look like? Yeah, I mean, we're talking harsh winters. Oh, (laughs) jeez. I mean, less than ideal living conditions. Okay, so a little rough around the edges. Yeah, a little rough around the edges. Yeah. And it makes you wonder if her earlier experiences prepared her for this. Right. You know, both the challenges and the freedoms. Yeah. Like maybe all those hardships, Mm -hmm. all those moments of feeling out of place Mm -hmm. helped her develop this incredible resilience. Right, she had to. Yeah. This ability to just adapt. To roll with the punches. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the added layer of motherhood. Oh, Right. She becomes a mother. Yes. Oh, wow. And becoming a parent is transformative anyway. Huge change. But for her, it's happening in this foreign exactly. land. Yeah. Surrounded by people whose customs and expectations are... Right. Totally different. So different. Yeah. Wow. And it makes you think about the choices we make as parents. It does. How our own experiences yeah. and the environments we create yeah. really shape our children's lives. Absolutely. And as she's settling into this life, mm-hmm. we start to see some cracks in her relationship with Chicho. Okay. His traditional views on women's roles. Clash with her independent spirit. Right. And his reluctance to kind of engage with her intellectually. Yeah. Leaves her feeling stifled. Yeah, unfulfilled. Yeah, have you ever felt that in a relationship? Oh, I think a lot of people have. Where you just feel like your partner doesn't see you. Yeah, or appreciate your full potential. Yeah, exactly. It's like you're yearning to connect on a deeper level, Mm -hmm. but something's holding you back. Yeah, and for her, yeah. I think that's amplified right. by the fact that she's already sacrificed so much yeah. to be with him. To be with him, exactly. You know, she left her home, her family yeah. her whole life. Her whole way of life, yeah. Yeah, and now she's realizing that even within this passionate love, right. there's this sense of isolation. Yeah. A lack of true partnership. It's heartbreaking. It is. And it makes you wonder if she ever regrets her choice. Right. If she ever longs for those simpler days yeah. before Chicho. But then again, Alvina is not one to dwell. I know. She's a survivor. She's a fighter. She's a fighter. Yeah. And we see that fighting spirit emerge okay. as she starts to assert her own needs and desires. In what way? So she forms this connection with Pancrazio. Pancrazio. Who is Chicho's uncle. Okay. And he seems to appreciate her intellect. Oh, interesting. Yeah, her observations about the world. Okay. It's a subtle shift in alliances. It is. But it's a significant one. Yeah. It's like she's seeking that connection and fulfillment yes. outside the confines of her marriage. Yes. Yeah. It reminds us that even in these seemingly restrictive environments, right. human relationships can still blossom. They can. Yeah. Yeah. And just when things seem to be reaching this breaking point, oh. Alvina gets this unexpected job offer. Oh, okay. A chance to return to England as a maternity nurse. Wow. 
It really throws everything into question. It does. Like, what's she going to do? Right. It's almost like fate stepping in, offering her a way out. Yeah, a way out. But it's not a simple choice. No. I mean, on the one hand, mm. she has the familiarity and the potential stability of England. Right. A place where she's proven she can succeed. Uh -huh. On her own. On her own. Yeah. But it's also the place that she longed to escape. Right. A place that represents all those constraints. Yeah. All the things she was trying to get away from. Yeah. And she's about to be a mom. Oh, right. Where does she see herself raising a child? Yeah, big question. Yeah, in the familiar world of England or right. in this more chaotic, passionate embrace of Italy. Right. I mean, I bet a lot of our listeners can relate to Oh, absolutely. this feeling of wanting the best for their children, right? but also trying to stay true to themselves. Trying to figure out what that even means. Exactly. Yeah. It's one of the most fundamental questions of parenthood. It is. How do yeah. we balance our needs with the needs of our kids? Right. It's tough. It is tough. And then in her case, yeah. it's further complicated oh. by these cultural differences yes. between England and Italy. Yeah. On the one hand, she could offer stability and predictability in England. Mm -hmm. But Italy represents this you know, vibrant, passionate right. way of life. Right, life full of beauty and tradition. Yeah. It's tough. It's a tough call. Yeah. And and to make things even more complicated, oh, the... Chicho refuses to influence her decision wow. in this surprising show of respect. Yeah. He basically says, it's your choice. Really? You make the decision. Mm. And it really speaks volumes, I think, about hey. their characters. Yeah. That he is despite his traditional views, uh -huh. allowing her this freedom wow. to choose oh. her own path. That's huge. Yeah. 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 It's like he's saying, you've come this far, you know, You're you right. fought for your independence, mm -hmm. now prove it. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a real test yeah. of her self-reliance. Yeah. You know, can she actually make a choice right. that's truly for her? Yeah. Not based on what other people think. And it's a choice with no easy answers. Not at all. I mean, England represents security, you yes. know. The known. Yeah, a known path. Yeah. A place where she's already proven she can stand on her own two feet. Right, exactly. But it's also... But it's also the place she wanted to get away from. Right. You know? It represents those constraints. The constraints. Yeah. Yeah. And, and don't forget, she's going to be a mom. Right. Oh, my gosh. It adds a whole other layer yeah, to this. I mean, where does she see herself... Raising a child. Right. In a place where she felt trapped or mm -hmm. in this, you know, new world that she's discovered. Right. It's a lot to think about. And I bet a lot of our listeners can relate to that feeling. Oh, for sure. You know, of wanting the best for your kids, but right. also staying true to yourself. Right. Like, what does that even look like? Yeah. What does that look like? And how do you... How do you do both? Balance it all. Yeah. It's one of those big questions. It's the question of parenthood. Yeah. And for Alvina, yeah. Yeah. it's even more complicated. Right, because you've got it's all cultural cultural differences. Differences, yeah. yeah. Between England and Italy. Right. You know, she could offer her child stability in England. Yeah. But Italy represents this passionate way of life. Yeah. You know, full of beauty and tradition. That's right. And I think that's what makes the ending of her story so powerful mm -hmm. is that it's not tied up in a neat little bow. Right. You know? It's open-ended. We're left wondering yeah. what path she chooses. Totally. And and why. And why. It's almost like an invitation. I did. Step into her shoes. Yeah, put yourself in her position. Yeah. What would you do? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the magic of fiction. It is. Is that it allows us to kind of grapple with these choices. Mm -hmm. These dilemmas. Yeah, these dilemmas yeah. without having to live through them ourselves. Exactly. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Alvina Houghton's life, yeah, we want to leave you with this final thought. Okay. Imagine yourself in Alvina's position. Okay. You've experienced everything she has. Yeah, the highs and lows. The highs and lows, yeah. the freedom. The responsibility, mm -hmm. what choice would you make? It's a good question. And why? Yeah, what would you do? Yeah, let Alvina's story be a springboard. Yeah, I love that. For your own reflections um, on the but... choices we all make. Right. The paths we forge. Yeah. And this constant search for a life that is both yeah. meaningful and authentic. Well said. Thanks for joining us on another deep dive. Yeah, this was a good one.